Welcome to Lib Wizard Quizzes. I'm Diane Schrecker, Curriculum Librarian and Head of the Instructional Resource Center at Ashland University Library. I'm also AU Library's SpringShare Platform Administrator. Today's workshop goals are to create a new quiz starting from a blank slate, select and construct quiz options including header, look and feel, and submissions, Identify the WorkPad content area and manage quiz options and fields. Develop a set of true-false questions and set question and answer properties. And review examples and operations of two existing LibWizard quizzes. Our workshop outcome is that participants will demonstrate an understanding of the quiz development process by creating a self-grading quiz with a start page, directions, three questions, and a certificate of completion. We'll begin by logging in to a LibApps account. The LibApps dashboard is your starting point for access to SpringShare sites currently used by Ashland University Library. From the My LibApps dashboard, select LibWizard to begin. Today we're going to be working with quizzes. Select Create New and we'll be starting with a blank slate. Enter a quiz name and a friendly URL. It should be easily identified by the learners. Then provide a short description of your quiz. When you're finished, select Save. This is the LibWizard quiz workpad and content area. You'll see quiz options, fields, the test bank, and the workpake area. Basic info displays information added at setup. You can return to this area at any time and make changes as needed. Public access control allows you to put in a password Publication status allows you to limit visibility and determine when your quiz can be seen by the public. Select From and To. When developing surveys for the Phonics Scavenger Hunt, I often use this option allowing submissions over a 10-day period of time. For this quiz, we're not going to set a publication status. The next section is Permissions. In this section, the quiz owner is identified. Staff permissions or who can view the quiz report and its submissions. And Edit permissions, people beside the owner who can edit and view the quiz report and its submissions. As an admin, I automatically have editing rights. This will not be the case for individual LibBlizzard account holders. Adding another person with editing rights allows for collaboration between users when developing a project. Select Admin Level Users and then All Users. From the list, select the person or people that you would like to collaborate with for the project. I'm going to select AU Librarian. Note that since a change has been made, you're being prompted to save. Save changes to continue. Moving on to quiz options, it's possible to set a timer to show how long the learner has to complete the quiz. You can decide whether or not to display a back button or randomize the quiz questions. If you're unsure, Leave this unchecked until finishing the quiz. You can always return later and reset to randomize. The next section, Page Header, affects how the quiz looks to learners. You can decide to use the system settings or use a custom page header. If you choose system settings, it will automatically add the AU Library header and default style sheet options for LibWizard. If you use a custom page header, you can choose a different image to be set for the quiz. 
or in our quiz header text to be shown at the top of the page. Keep in mind that you cannot upload an image header, but can enter an image URL to direct an image. For instance, something uploaded to your image gallery in your LibApps image gallery library, you would be able to find the URL and use it for the quiz. For this quiz, I'm going to use quiz header text. Again, you're going to notice with a change, you'll be prompted to save. The last thing in this section is CSS or Cascading Style Sheets. These may be used, but use them with caution. Moving on to Look and Feel, you'll be able to further customize the quiz. Looking at page fonts and colors, you can customize font style, text color, background colors, and other things without needing to know the style sheet code that discussed before. Select page fonts and colors, choose use the system settings, or use custom colors for this form. For this quiz, I'm going to select Verdana from the drop down menu, change the page title to AU Purple, and change the border color to the same. Once those are in place, click Save to continue. Width and height determine display size of your quiz. I'm going to set the width for my quiz at 85% and leave the height on automatic. And again, save when prompted. Further options include changing the label position or what will be posted when you require a question. You can decide whether to automatically display a number field, and if you have more than one page, display the progress bar. And as before, there is a style sheet available for this section. The next area is submission behavior. This section will determine how the quiz functions when the learner submits their answers. To start, leave the spam control in place. What this does is helps prevent spam bots from filling out the quiz. Decide if you want your quiz to display a review page. This will allow them to look at their questions before they submit. Post submissions work with what happens when things are submitted. You can select a redirect URL to send users somewhere specific, post results to a URL of your, decide, your decision, decide what post format you may want, and determine if you want email notification. I'm going to use the IRC email address for email notification, but I'm not going to fill out any of these other fields. LibWizard collects data and provides options to export in several formats, including Excel, so I rarely use these submission options. Decide if you want user submission made metadata with the email, and choose advanced email sessions if you want. Finally, in this section, you can set submission form limits. Determine how many limits of items you would have. You will then choose a maximum amount. For this example, I will not be limiting submissions. Moving on to reporting, decide what data you want to collect for reports, including IP address, referring URL, and browser information. I'm going to determine to not collect browser information. The last section in Quiz Options is Advanced. There is an option to configure a privacy scrub and create a pre-filled quiz via URL and configure the settings. If you're interested in learning more about the advanced settings, see me after the workshop or consider attending a SpringShare webinar on the topic. The last thing we want to do with quiz options is make sure that there are no unsaved changes. Save before we continue. This completes the quiz options section of the workshop. 
before we take a break to work on our own projects, I'd like to share with you two examples of quizzes that are currently being used. The first is an IRC training quick check. It uses the preset LibWizard system settings for page header, look, and feel. In addition to the welcome page, there are directions, images, multiple choice questions, and three separate pages with questions. Note that there are required questions within this quiz. This second quiz, EBSCOhost and Google Drive, is part of the ATS Library Blackboard site. It has a customized page header as well as its own selected page fonts and colors. Select Begin to continue. As with the IRC quiz, there are directions, a series of true-false questions, submission response directions, a review of the answers, a score, and certificate of completion for users. It's also possible to retake the quiz. It's time for a short session break. During this time, explore your quiz progress and make any changes or try something new. When you come back, make sure that you have your sample quiz questions ready to enter. We will start again in 30 minutes.